Well, happy Monday, everyone. Um, welcome back to the fund management training series. Uh, today, we're talking about internal revenue, um, primarily recharges and recharge facilities and operations. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started for today's agenda. Uh, we're going to be talking about understanding recharge flow, so just the high-level cycle of how um, you sort of get started as a recharge facility um, all the way through to closeout. Um, throughout the course of today, we're going to show you a demo of the recharge app. We're going to talk about the accounting setup and how that's managed um, and some of the best practices for departments. And then we'll get into the resources and Q&A as well. Um, just as a quick overview, friendly reminder that we are here on internal revenue and recharges. So we're almost at the end of our series. Um, this is number eight for those of you that are counting. I know that I am. Um, so just reminder that we have today is Monday, the 19th. Um, on Wednesday, we are going to be going over financial reporting. I'm just giving you some updates, talking about the uh, replacements for my funds and EBS. The status there. We're going to be talking through account hierarchies, managerial hierarchies. Um, so please join us on Wednesday. And then on Friday, every week, we have um, a joint office hours for the training sessions that we put on that, that week. So we will see you guys on Friday. Just as a reminder, some housekeeping. Um, for those of you, we have gotten most of the, so excuse me, so on the recorded webinars page, um, we are current as far as our training decks and our links, so you can go back and watch the fund management series. I will still be adding office hours. Also, for those of you that are tracking, we have the known transitional issues page. This is where we give you information and status updates on known issues and what the central offices are doing to resolve those. Um, and then as well, uh, internal recharge, the PPM user guide also goes over sort of these recharge activities and how that's managed through the project portfolio management module. So be, uh, be sure to read that PPM user guide. And with that, I will turn it over to Simona. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Laura. Uh, it's very nice to be here to be part of this uh, uh, series uh, uh, and this uh, webinar in particular. Um, as um, she identified, um, the purpose of the webinar is to provide an um, overview of the recharge operations. And considering the audience, uh, we um, determined that it's best to uh, start with um, the beginning, meaning establishing a recharge uh, facility. And that is um, for those activities that provide uh, specific ongoing um, and repetitive goods or services to the campus. So um, the first step is to establish uh, that uh, particular uh, recharge. And then uh, in order to do that, you have to um, have the proper accounting set up and uh, uh, department um, that will provide the guidance and assistance is uh, general accounting. So you start with the project setup with a specific accounts, uh, specific expenditure types, and also uh, the way that uh, uh, the files and the submission uh, methods. Um, you can use either MCI files in this new system or uh, various recharge applications that will uh, further be uh, detailed in this presentation. Uh, once you have the recharge operations, uh, one of uh, the areas to focus on is um, supporting your customers and um, making sure that you meet the needs. Um, and we are trying to uh, present um, some best practices or uh, our recommendation based on feedback. Um, and then uh, the fourth step is um, definitely the analysis and reporting the need for um, timely reconciliation, monthly reconciliation, making sure that uh, um, all um, areas are in alignment and you are uh, providing the services, but also you are getting the income for it. And uh, the fifth step is closing a recharge facility um, and what are the uh, the steps, uh, who are the um, departments involved in ensuring that uh, that is something that is um, um, happening. So um, making sure that all the um, elements uh, that were presented uh, at the beginning are also uh, the cleanup and the inactivation is being performed. Um, in the next slide, as you can see, there are um, um, 
details about establishing a, a recharge facility. So what is in fact a recharge is a mechanism a internal. Um, we also are referring to it um, as the internal revenue as opposed to the external revenue. And it's a way to uh, redistribute expenses for products and services that are provided uh, for various um, organizational units within universities. So um, the recharge facility has as the main customers internal uh, departments uh, within UCSD. Um, the type of uh, services, the sales and services activities are the ones that determine uh, the establishment, the modification, the discontinuation, and also various approval and uh, various um, entities involved in the um, overview, approval, reconciliation, and so forth. So um, there is... Um, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, there is a lot of guidance on Blink um, and uh, also part of this uh, webinar in the resource area, where um, we uh, you can uh, further look for details. Um, I would like to point that uh, the department uh, that um, is the advisor for this type of um, activities is the Financial Analysis Office. Um, and also you have um, the representation at each VC level um, for the uh, policies and guidance for establishing new service uh, level agreements. Um, and also um, uh, what are the best practices and what is allowable and um, so forth for a recharge application. Um, in, um, also, um, the main questions that you should be asking as um, identified in the next slide is uh, when and how to become an uh, approved recharge facilities. Is there a need to have uh, a, a separate line of services? Is, is there a need to have an extension of your current uh, services? So based on uh, this determination, um, you have to also ask if there is uh, something that it's a one time or if it's a constant uh, demand uh, for uh, equipment services and so forth. Uh, the links uh, identified here present um, the guidance um, and also um, the recharge advisory committee. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, each vice chancellor unit has uh, representation in this uh, committee. Um, also, uh, the central offices um, have experts um, as participating um, and uh, providing the support needed uh, for campus. Um, the steps in um, for reviewing and approving the recharges uh, start with, uh, first of all, um, determining the need, the demand, the um, consistency, and then um, you anticipate expenses, you um, establish the relationship with your uh, internal clients. Um, there is a need for um, preparing a rate uh, application um, and that uh, once all the information is being uh, um, gathered, um, revised uh, by the uh, financial analyst within the department, uh, the data is submitted to um, the vice chancellor for um, review and endorsement. And then it goes to internal controls and accounting, uh, general accounting are so known. Um, for uh, specific recharges, there is also a need uh, for a final approval from uh, financial analysis office. And um, at that point, uh, there is a, a constant uh, communication and uh, uh, back and forth between uh, the three reference departments. And um, you, as the, the department, you will get uh, communication of the final approval from your vice chancellor. And uh, now I would like to um, um, give this opportunity to Marisa to take over. Thanks so much, Simona. Really appreciate going through all of that. Um, so I'm gonna delve into a little bit more about now the accounting setup for your recharge operation. So uh, you're gonna have a project for your recharge operation. It's gonna have a specific class category of line of service to really call out and group that this is a recharge operation. The project title is going to start with REC for recharge, and then whatever that uh, facility name is that you have, whatever your recharge operation name is. There will be a minimum um, 
well, so these are the various tasks that will be set up under your research operation. So for sure, you're going to have one task that points to fund 12100 for your recharge operating fund. You will um, optionally, if appropriate, you will also have a task for 17000 for your recharge equipment R and R fund, and another task for that points to fund 12200 for your recharge external sales differential income as applicable. If you have additional lines of service, that need to point to your operating fund. So the 12100, then tasks four through however many you need for your lines of service can be set up under that. Next slide. So then within PPM, how are these transactions gonna look? So here are the commonly used recharge accounts and expenditure types. So for your internal recharge accounts, what we're really focusing a lot on today um, is that you're gonna see uh, 77000 plus your specific line of service as that debit line that you're charging to your customer, right? So this is the expense account to record a charge from a recharge facility providing the goods and services, and it normally has a debit balance, right? This is what you're charging to the customers. That 77000 is going to be used for all recharge expenses across uh, the campus, but you'll have a unique expenditure type uh, for each. Uh, line of service. Then the income side, so your internal income is that 775000 for recharge income self supporting activities. This is the account to record internal income received from providing goods and services to the uh, fellow UC departments and UC users. So it normally has a credit balance. Um, the external revenue accounts are different rev external revenue accounts. So if you're billing outside of UCSD, then we'll have the recharge accounts. Uh, you can see all three of them listed there. One for on campus, if the service activity is located in campus space, one for off campus, if it's done off campus, and then one for ship use. So um, we included this here because it pertains to recharge operations, but really the external revenue was really focused in our external revenue training last week. You can go back and rewatch that, that webinar as Next slide. So the transactions, how are the transactions done for recharges? They are done directly within PPM. And then PPM then generates that accounting up to the general ledger. The mechanism for creating these costs is through an MCI file. That stands for miscellaneous cost import file. It's a specific file type that Oracle provides to us to be able to import costs into the PPM subledger. All of these files will have a, a specific transaction source that really represents what is the system that's generating these costs. So I'll have a document and a document entry. And so, um, and then also, as we talked about in the last slide, there will be a shared credit expenditure type for the cost recovery. So kind of that income side, and then a unique debit expenditure type for each, each authorized uh, recharge facility. So here's the basic flow, right? It was that the document entry on your MCI file will include all of the POETAF information. It has two lines for your recharge entry. So you're expensing on one side, getting the income on the other side goes into the MCI file. The next slide. So, um, so the document entry, so a few more questions. This is what's gonna be unique to your recharge facility. And so it's uh, generally established to process recharge transactions in the MCI uh, file or recharge applications. We're gonna be talking more about the various uh, ways to get this data in, um, but this is the basis of the file. The document entry name should be the preferred recharge facility name, um, which really matches your project name and your expenditure type. And so that's part of the setup before you really even start doing the transactions. This is part of the setup piece of that. But then you're going to continue to use that in your files. Next slide. So this is what a basic recharge entry is going to look like, right? There's two lines, right? You're providing a service, so you're charging that customer, and then you're receiving the income. Okay, so Department A is recharging Department B for an HR background check. So then the, the debit side is going to be Department B recharge expense of 77000 
then the credit is going to be Department A for that recharge in internal income. So this uh, screenshot includes what the project and task number would be, what that fund is that it's pointing to. So you'll see the fund when you look at the general ledger and then the unique expenditure types that you're going to be able to see in that MCI file. And then the credit and the debit is what it would look like when you look at the general ledger. Next slide. So there are different mechanisms to submit your files for recharge operations. And so the MCI file is the basis for, for all of the ways to get data into PPM and costs into PPM. So this MCI file, you can do it manually. It's, a, it's an Excel macro spreadsheet. Uh, so this MCI file is completed manually and submitted through the services and support ticket for upload. We also have an MCI builder. This is a UCSD built APIs that will allow the recharge operation. If you have your own technical resources to build your recharge application, they can leverage this MCI builder to really make the submission of these files um, easier and um, with less errors. And then we also have a recharge application. So RMP, the uh, resource management and planning, I hope I got that right. If not, Richard, correct me in a little bit. Um, developed an application that will be available for recharge operations that don't have their own technical support to be able to build these MCI files and submit them. So this RMP application is built on that MCI builder, but it's just a technical implementation of that MCI file. So you can still do it manually. We really don't recommend that um, because there's just a, a lag time. It's human processing as opposed to options two and three, which are more technical um, a solution to getting the cost in PPM. And so now I'm going to send it over to uh, Shruti to go into more details on what's, what are the data elements in these MCI files. Thank you, Marissa. So this is, the, this is a sample of the MCI file that you'll be able to find on the KBA, which is linked at the bottom of the slide, how to process recharges with MCI file in PPM. So there is a link on step one of this KBA which will take you to this MCI file. Now, if you, what's important is that your version date is at this point, um, April 8th of 2021. If the file that gets downloaded is not for this date, please clear your browsing history and then retry and then try to download this file again. So you have the correct version. The, the older versions will work, but we have found that um, it will take a little bit longer. Or there are um, higher chances of errors in some of those files because we have now only displayed columns and data fields that are required or would be required. The, what you see on your screen are currently all of the fields that we, we need in order to submit these the, the recharge transactions into PPM. The next slide will go into a little bit more detail on, on some of these columns. So the first few um, columns here, you'll see in the MCI file, you'll, see, you'll have drop downs, and those are the only options that are available. So please use those drop downs when available. The blue text at the top will give you a little bit of guidance on what is needed in each of these columns. So please use that as a reference as well. Now in column F and H, you'll see document and document entry. That is um, what Marissa had talked about um, a little bit earlier that you do need those. It is required field for, the, for, for us to be able to upload this. If your recharge facility does not have a document or document entry, you'll have to submit for one. And it, that is available also in the KBA in the, on the previous slide that was listed. So just scroll down to that KPA and you'll see how to how you would need to submit for a document and a document entry for your recharge facility. Expenditure um, batch uh, is a unique number and we ask that for each for your MCI file that you use the same expenditure batch for that particular file. Um, we we use that as a reference for, for uploading. And then um, the next couple of columns as far as 
expenditure date, item date, please make sure that that date is not in the future. It has to be a date that is in the past and within your project, um, project date. Project number and project task. We have numbers here and not the names of your project and your tasks because it increases the um, risk of errors and those are the required fields in Oracle. An expenditure type is the number and the name. Please make sure that there are no additional spaces after your expenditure type. Otherwise it will increase errors and take longer to process this file. The next slide will go into the second half of the columns that are required. Expenditure organization, please note that this is the name and not the number of your expenditure organization. And please also make sure that there are no additional spaces at the end. Funding source is for source number is only if your project is a sponsored project. It is required if it is a sponsored project and please leave a blank if you're using a general project. Now quantity here and the very last column raw costing tra transaction currency. You're asked to complete this twice because those are required fields for the upload. Um, so that is the amount of the transaction. The file must net to zero. So please make sure that if you have a debit, you also have a credit and it nets to zero. There are a few additional required um, drop downs uh, that you will have to complete. And there's only one option, for instance, the unit of measure and the, the transaction currency code. Keep those at current, at, at what the drop down is, which is currency and UCSD. Original transaction reference, that is a required field. So it is important that it is completed. Um, then the unmatched negative transaction, this particular field, you can put Y in all of the all of your rows, but it must have a Y for the negative um, for the negative numbers for your credit. And um, expenditure item comment is optional, and that takes us to the end of the file. Um, so then now, Marissa will continue um, continue talking about how to prevent additional load errors. Thanks so much for going through that file, Shruti. So um, in, in building these files, um, there can be errors, right? And so now we're gonna talk through what some of the errors are, some of the best practices to really ensure that your files can be processed um, timely and accurately the first time. So with, with MCI files, there's two points of failure. And so one is loading the file into the Oracle system, and the other one is importing the file into the PPM subledger. Um, so most of the time, the loading of the file is not something that um, most of you would even kind of notice or recognize as a separate step. Um, but the, the importing of the file is where it's really getting into PPM and loading those costs into your project. If you use the MCI Builder or the RMP application to build and submit your files, you will receive real-time feedback to prevent both types of errors, which is a really great thing and really helpful to really uh, make sure that your files are getting processed timely. Um, if you're submitting through a ticket, then it is a manual process. And knowing that there's these two points of failure, there might be different ways that you're gonna have to edit your file and your data to get that corrected. So a few of the known most common error types, um, the first, uh, one, two, three, really have to do with loading the file. So if you have the wrong format for any of your data, so the, for instance, the expenditure date or accounting uh, date, um, if it's not the right format, then it's going to error out when loading the file. If the data attribute does not exactly match what's in Oracle, um, then it's going to also have a problem when you're loading the file. So for instance, trailing spaces, or if the slashes, right? There's some examples there. And that's why Shruti really emphasized, don't have any extra spaces in that file when you're building it, right? Because it's gonna error out when it's loading. Also avoid putting extra commas in the open text fields, such as the expenditure batch, description, transaction reference, and expenditure comment. Um, because since this, the, the file itself is an Excel macro, sometimes those comments, you know, Excel reads that comma differently than you're really intending it to be. 
Um, then within the importing of the file, so let's say your, your file loads, the, the data is in the right format, but now it's loading into PPM and now it's failing because of a PPM control. So for instance, the expenditure item date is outside of the project or award date. This is one of the more common uh, errors that we're really seeing in importing the file. So it's really important to make sure um, as a recharge operation that the project um, or award information that you're getting that POETAF information that is really within that period of performance for that project. If this error happens when you're importing the file, then you're going to have to submit a ticket to delete that unprocessed batch and submit a ticket with the corrected imported, uh, the corrected file to import. So that's kind of timely and kind of clunky. So um, really don't recommend it. <laughs> Another couple of common errors in the importing are ones that actually can be fixed within a, the central offices. So one is where there's a, a budget on a project that's not baseline. So you'll only see this error in regards to sponsored and capital projects. Um, and then another one is where um, it's a similar kind of error, but where the project is not doesn't have the correct fund or function set up on that project task. And so then it errors out when it's trying to process that cost because PPM doesn't know how to account for that. And you'll see that on general and capital projects. So with both of those errors, um, as central offices, we are looking for those errors and trying to review and resolve them as quickly as possible. But if you do notice that, then just go ahead and submit a ticket or reach out um, and we can, we can get that corrected and re-import that cost for you. Uh, next slide. So a couple more of the best practices um, in, in submitting these files, really use that original transaction reference field to be a unique identifier for that transaction so that it can really tie back to that original source system. Oracle is designed for this to be a unique um, tie back. Um, so, and it really does help with some of the other processing within the system, such as the cost transfer process. Expenditure item comments is a great field um, to leverage. It's a free form text field. There's actually a lot of character room in it, maybe too much, <laughs> but uh, that's really a great space to provide more comments about what is this, um, what is this cost? And so um, this is also something that if it errors, if a cost errors out, then we'll edit that comment field to reflect the original data. This comments field is another great place to include the period of service. All right, so if you're recharging for the, you know, uh, April services, go ahead and put that in the comments so that it's really clear um, what is this, what is this charge for? What is this recharge expense for? Um, the clearer each of these cost transactions are, I think it's easier for not only the customer that's receiving the expense, but also for the recharge operation to prevent questions coming into them that could have been provided up front. The other thing to really keep in mind with the way that PPM processes costs is that each line is a unique line. It is an individual line. So as Shruti mentioned, the file that you submit has to have two lines um, for every cost, right? One for the expense, one for, one for the credit or for the income. And so your file then should net to zero with the positives and negatives. But if you have any errors, then one of those lines could error out, but not the other side of that. So that's really something to keep in mind as well, that this is a very different type of file that PPM uses. Um, it's not like a journal where if one thing is wrong, the entire thing fails. In PPM, you only see that in the loading of the file, not in the input. So, um, so I really recommend, next slide, um, to not do the manual files as much as possible. So we really have an enhancement opportunity and that is to migrate onto the recharge application. And so next slide. So we've begun some work in onboarding some recharge operations onto the recharge application so that it can take you off these manual files and submitting tickets. So the objectives here are to migrate authorized recharge units from using the manual file um, to now using a self-service application. The application provides the recharge units the ability to submit their own recharges and doesn't require approval or route through workflow. And going department to by, by department to assess the business application and fit for the migration to this recharge. 
So this is an optional uh, transition for you. It is an optional application for recharge operations to use. Um, but the benefits I think are really gonna be, be great for those of you that do choose to migrate because you'll get that real time messaging of any errors or things that you need to correct and will really streamline and make the process faster for you to get these costs in um, in a timely manner and uh, that you get all, all of your transactions in. So the scope for this onboarding is for authorized recharges as approved by internal controls and accounting. And, or previously approved by the Financial Analysis Office. Um, these are current, if you're currently submitting files, right, then you're on our radar for the scope of this, um, my, uh, moving on to this application. What's out of scope though, is other transactions that you may want to be initiating to go through PPM, such as cost transfers, depreciation, or other cost redistributions. Next slide. So some uh, specific recharge, organizations are being targeted to be onboarded to the RMP application now through the end of this fiscal year. So to expedite the reviewer onboarding of this process, if you can review this uh, list that we have a Google Sheet uh, link here, you can review this list and populate a single point of contact. Um, if there's multiple contacts, if you can really identify a single person for us to reach out to, um, that'll really help us to know who to reach out to in a more targeted way. Um, there's no approval process or workflow to post charges to Oracle through this application. And so uh, this is really something to think about, you know, centralizing within your recharge operation, that control point to really make sure that the appropriate people are generating these transactions. Also, if you're planning on building your own application, maybe you're in the, the process of building your own application, leveraging that MCI builder, just go ahead and identify that in this file as well. So then we won't reach out to you to onboard you to the RMP application, knowing that you're building your own application. But this is really a way that you can help us to identify who we can work with and, and get you onboarded if you're interested. So, from, uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to Richard, who's going to give you a demo of the RMP application. All right. Um, Try to share this here. I'm Richard Dunning. I'm a software developer in ITS um, in the group that works with RMP. Uh, we built a recharge applications um, originally specifically for RMP, um, but as one of the requirements, we had to be able to support multiple different groups. Um, and because of that, it uh, made it more suitable for uh, other groups on campus to also be able to leverage this tool. So um, this, uh, I'm just going to do a brief overview of how to um, actually create and submit a charge. And there's two methods in the app. The first method, you can create um, recharges directly in the app. Um, oh, these, are, these tabs are the different groups. So I'm in uh, six different groups. Each group is associated with a document entry. So that will um, be used automatically if you create a charge within the group. So we've got shuttle operations here. Um, if you want to create a charge, you um, just click on the plus and you select a product. The product is something that um, in this dev environment, the transportation department, um, they set up products for uh, recurring um, similar types of recharges. Um, so in here, they set up shuttle services and charter reservations. You can pick one and it'll bring in the project number, name, the task number and name, a default recharge rate and um, if you want to, you can add on a material cost or something like that, and it'll calculate a final cost. Um, the only other thing you would have to do is pick your customer's project. This looks up the project number from uh, OFC, and you pick the task. Uh, choose the date. You would set it to active, and then um, if this was a real charge that you wanted us to submit, you'd save it. And um, all you need to do to submit all the active charges in your list is click on submit active charges to OFC. When you do that, it goes into a processing status. And when it's finished, it'll say it's submitted. Once a charge has been submitted, you can uh, click on the log to see um, the date it was submitted. There's a request ID that comes from Oracle. This is the batch number in Oracle for that charge. And this is the specific transaction number for this exact charge. Um, so one thing you'd note is that the uh, 
provider and the customer are included in the same um, charge in this app. If either of those lines were to fail when it goes through validation, it will uh, kick both lines out of the file. So you don't have to worry about um, an individual line getting through. Um, I have an example of a uh, failure here. I found one in production um, from a while back. Uh, this is what it looks like if a charge fails. Um, it still has a batch number because that's the batch of the rest of the charges that may or may not have gone through. And the error in this case was the expenditure failed project level transaction controls. Um, usually what that one means is that the expenditure type isn't allowed for the particular project it was called out. Um, so that's uh, what that looks like. Um, the other way that you can uh, import recharges into this app is using the Excel option. Um, we have our own Excel template that we came up with. It's kind of a trimmed down version of an MCI. Um, again, the biggest difference is that each line has both the customer side and the um, provider side in it. So um, this charge description goes to that expenditure item comment field. Um, there's customer project task, uh, funding source, expenditure type. There's an optional revenue expenditure type. If you want to override the default, um, that would be on the credit side of the transaction. Um, then there's the provider details, the dollar amount, and the service date. And that's all you need to do. Um, you fill that out, come in here. You would import in, the, in here. You just choose the file. Um, and it will load everything in here in active status. And if everything looks good, you click submit. And it, again, goes through that same process to load into OFC. Um, so that's all I have. Good morning. I'm Tassine Lazini, and I'm going to speak about internal statement best practices. So we alluded to it a little bit earlier. It's very important to share the details about the transaction <clears throat> that you are charging your customer. So if you're a recharge unit, you should use <clears throat> the original transaction reference, which is a required field in the MCI file, and also the expenditure item comment which is not a required field, but it's very helpful to put information there so that your customers or the fund managers who are reviewing the costs will be able to see exactly who the cost was for, uh, when it was, and what, was, what service was or good was provided. Um, also provide the contact information for whom to reach if there are questions. And, um, External detail reports can be created in separate applications to assist customers in obtaining detailed data. So in my department, chemistry and biochemistry, our system uh, has the ability to, um, to show backup. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. Uh, reminders, charge your clients on a timely basis. It is not fair to your clients to charge uh, for items many months in arrears. And I know with the transition to Oracle, many of us have had to do these late charges, but in general, it's, it's very important to charge on time every month. Um, also ensure that the PTF, the project task and uh, fund is valid. Um, if possible, so, and if you are, what, what my process has been when I'm submitting recharges, if I find the PTF is not valid, I will reach out to the fund manager for that project and say, well, it's not working. Can you please send me a replacement project and task uh, to charge this to? But it is also possible to charge the default project for that department uh, if one cannot get a replacement project and task. And if that happens, it's important in your expenditure item comment to list what original PTF was attempted to be used. Next slide, please. 
here is an example of how you can see those uh, expenditure item comments in Oracle. So the very top row uh, shows uh, your uh, manage project cost detail. And you can see on the far left, there is a blue hyperlink. And if you look down, if you click on that, that it shows you a little more about the expenditure item. So I've put a little rectangle around the comment box, which is, it's an optional field in the MCI file, but it's so helpful to put information there. So in this comment, it's providing a place from the UCSD bookstore to find the actual transaction detail. So it's not a live hyperlink, but you just take it, you copy it, put it in your browser, and then you can see here, there's a very beautiful <laughs> statement from UCSD Bookstore saying exactly who was charged uh, and what was purchased so that the fund manager can look at that and say, okay, well, this is appropriate for this project or this is not appropriate. Uh, another place to get this kind of information is in the, uh, the project cost and expenditure project balances with expenditure details dashboard. And there's a tab in there called expenditure details. If you were to run that for your project, you can scroll to the right and you can see expenditure comments. Um, so there, there are different ways to get to this. And it's also very important that it is, it saves time of both the recharge analyst as well as the fund manager to have this detail provided because nobody wants to have to email the other person and say, hey, can you give me some detail behind this? Rather, if you give them a place for all that detail right up front, then it saves everyone time. And now Marissa is going to talk about an analysis and reporting. Marissa? Thanks so much. Okay, so there's a couple of different reports um, that we have currently available to help you reconcile um, your, your recharges. I would say kind of from both, uh, both directions, both as a recharge operation um, as well as a customer. So we have the project cost detail report that is a comprehensive report um, to validate that every transaction is posting to the PPM subledger as intended. So that's where for a recharge operation, this would be a great report to run to really make sure that, you know, if, you, uh, if you're charging 100 different costs and you're 100 different lines of income, that all 200 of those posted. This is also can be really useful for uh, customers to be able to pull a report of, of all of the transactions that posted from a particular um, recharge operation. So there's a couple different uses there, um, but a great report to see all that detail. Within the PPM uh, module, the Manage Project Costs um, screen, that search screen, it's really kind of the same as the prior report. It's just that it's within the Oracle system as opposed to a report. But you can search by the expenditure batch to validate what's posted. So that's a really useful tool as well. You search by the batch, and then you can export everything that loaded, and then you can make sure that it was as intended. Also, within the... Um, within Oracle on manage project costs. If you're a customer, this is something that you could search by the um, expenditure organization, which would be that recharge operation organization, or by the particular expenditure type um, that you're being charged, right? So as we talked about like 77000, um, and then, you know, uh, chemistry storehouse, or I'm not sure what you have, but <laughs> whatever that specific expense is. So that's another way to sort and filter and look for that. And then uh, within the um, Financial Reporting Center, the Unprocessed Transactions Report, this is really useful for recharge operations to manage any of the costs that did not post to Oracle in the submitted batch. So this report is gonna show what, what you intended to import but did not get imported um, that has some particular type of error message. We also at Go Live had identified from recharge operations that they were interested in a particular report that would look kind of like a PL style report that would really reflect external income, internal income, you know, less the actual expenses. So that report is still um, on the radar um, to be developed, but is not yet available. 
So next slide, please. So if you're a recharge operation and you're, you're, you're done, you've completed, you know, providing all the services, you're going to close up the shop. Um, how do you do that? Go ahead and submit a ticket to the financial analysis office. Um, and FAO will complete any of the necessary steps to prepare for that discontinuation, such as ensuring all the expenses and revenues have posted and any of the related projects are closed. Afterwards, um, internal controls and accounting group will perform the process of deactivating any of the particular accounting elements in the chart of accounts to ensure that that recharge op operation is discontinued. That's kind of your closeout process for recharge applications. So on the next slide, we have a variety of resources that are available to you. So we have office hours this, uh, I think this Friday, right? <laughs> uh, so office hours, and then um, here's various links for the governing policies on what are the rules around a recharge operation. There are a lot of rules and compliance that comes along with the recharge op operation. So those are the governing policies. And then we have a variety of um, additional resources in terms of uh, KBA links um, to support you in, in managing your operation, um, including how to fill out these MCI files. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and move into Q&A. So please feel free to use the question and answer section um, there in Zoom to submit your questions. We'll go ahead and go through them and try to answer as many of them live as we can. Um, as we've been going along, I've been seeing a couple of different questions come through that I'm going to go ahead and just kick off our, our Q&A with. So I'll give a little bit more information on some of the error messages that I briefly talked about earlier. So one of the error messages that I mentioned is an error message that says something along the lines of uh, this, this cost cannot be imported due to budgetary control and your budget is not uh, uh, there is no control budget, something like that. What that means is that for sponsored and capital projects, they are required to have a budget to begin spending within Oracle. So that's, that's a control within Oracle. And so there has to be some sort of budget and it has to be through that date period. And so sometimes what will happen um, on a sponsored project is that there will be a budget that goes through uh, 2021. And then we receive a no cost extension through 2022. We actually have to update all of the dates on the award and the project. And that includes updating the budget dates as well and rebaselining that. And sometimes that final little step, um, sometimes there's kind of a timing issue um, in processing that. So um, for sponsored projects, we are trying to help create those initial baseline budgets um, for the departments, but departments have the ability to update their budgets as well um, to ensure that all of the costs can go through. But that is something that we can help to correct from a, a central office perspective. Um, the other um, error message that's very common is about dates. So in, in Oracle PPM, any of the costs that are incurred must be incurred within the project period. Now, I'm very specifically using the word date incurred because I think in, especially around recharges, this is an important concept. So if you were, um, I'm going to pick on no, uh, animal care. <laughs> so if there was services that were provided for animal care for the month of March, that was incurred in the month of March. So even if that transaction to charge for those services is happening in April, the services were incurred in March. So the expenditure item date must be within March. So if that's the case and your project ends at the end of March, as long as that expenditure item date is in March, that will post because the costs were incurred in March in that project period. So that's just really important to make sure that the expenditure item date reflects the date that these services were incurred, that they were provided. Okay. Otherwise, those the, you might get an error date that says these, these expenses are outside of the project period. And um, so then in those cases, 
that would be a case where the recharge operation would potentially go back to the customer and ask for um, a correct project and task. Or the recharge operation could also post that to the uh, financial unit default project um, so that, that that expense can get posted for that recharge operation. Okay, so it's really important to make sure um, that as a customer, you've provided the recharge operations with the appropriate project, but also for the recharge operations to make sure that um, any of the tools that you're using to track what project to charge to, um, that you have that updated. There was a question about, well, what if, a, what if a customer doesn't have a project? They just provided a chart string. The design for recharges is that all recharges should be processed to a project. So if a customer doesn't have a project, that was one of the primary reasons that we created default projects for every financial unit. So in that case, the recharge operation can charge to the, the financial unit default project. All those projects start with DFLT and then the FIN unit number. So that would be how you could, uh, as a recharge operation, still get that, ex that, um, that cost posted to your customer. Um, and then another uh, clarification uh, that I wanted to make in terms of how PPM sees individual costs. So if we think about, um, so what happens if you have a file with 10 different costs, um, right? You have five that are, are uh, costs that are going to the customer and then five that are reflecting the internal income, right? So 10 lines in this Excel spreadsheet or 10 lines that are in the RMP application. PPM processes each line individually. So each line is checked against all of the Oracle controls. Uh, so the, the dates, the, the budgets, the um, as Richard showed, the project transaction controls. Each line is processed separately. And so out of that 10 line file, it's possible that seven of them go through and three of them don't because those three have an error. So that's just really important to keep in mind when you're correcting errors, you wanna make sure that you don't assume that you can reload your entire file. No, you need to correct just those individual lines that did not go through. Okay, I'm gonna take a look at our Q&A here real quick. Um, had a couple of questions about recharges between campus and um, the medical center. I don't have all of the answers um, in this. So if any of my fellow panelists wanna chime in here, uh, that would be great. What I do know is that the, the medical center does recharge two projects, um, especially for sponsored projects. So for instance, I know with Epic, they post two projects um, because that's really important for the sponsored projects portfolio, but I'm not sure if there's extra nuances there that I'm just not aware of. Um, so I've got a question about external uh, revenue and billing to external customers. So if a recharge unit provides services for an external customer, you would want to bill through PPM and so that that would get reflected at your task level to reflect against your particular line of service. And we address that a little bit more in the external revenue webinar as well. So um, you can also go back and, and listen to that webinar. We go into a few more of those details and use cases. So following up again on, on the individual costs, right, a, a line at a time kind of an idea. Um, that's why it's really important to make sure that your file, that all of your intended costs do go through in our process so that it isn't unbalanced because that is an important compliance um, for managing your recharge operation. I see our questions slowing down. So kind of last call for any, any questions. Um, I really hope that uh, those of you that, um, I, I hope we've generated some excitement about getting onboarded to the RMP application and, um, you know, we are gonna be onboarding uh, departments as fast as we can. Um, so we have a, there was a Google sheet that I think was uh, posted in the chat um, to put who your point of contact is for, for the recharge operations. And then uh, we have a team that'll get in touch with you to, to get you onboarded just as soon as possible. So um, in terms of timeline, we're hoping to get everybody onboarded by the end of the fiscal year. Um, 
that, you know, there's some, there's some steps to getting onboarded, but the first step would be make sure that we know who we can work with and who the point person is for that. So go ahead and fill that out in that Google sheet. <clears throat> Marissa, this is Kurt. Um, I just wanted to <laughs> mention something. I saw a question that I clicked on the wrong um, button and I, I actually killed the question by mistake. Somebody anonymously asked if there's a way to attach an invoice or a, um, a file to your MCI files. Uh, and I think it was meant through the uh, API app. And the, 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 one, the only one I've seen is you, you can't actually uh, um, attach the file, uh, whether you're coming through an, R, uh, an app or even doing MCI imports manually but you can embed a link like the bookstore has done to uh, where the customer can click on that link and go get their invoices. But uh, that was actually programmed by that developer who created that app to automatically uh, populate that field. But I wouldn't see a problem with doing that in a manual import if you had a valid link that you could provide in your, um, in your MCI files, but you'd probably wanna test that first. Yeah, like uh, I think that's um, related to that example that Tassine showed with the, the bookstore where you can include that link to uh, in the expenditure item comments and then can copy and paste that into your into your browser. So I think that's a great um, suggestion for um, how the research operations can link that data. All right. Um, well, it looks like uh, we're, we're kind of winding down here. So again, with the reports, the best reports that we have really are manage, uh, the managed project cost report. Um, through reports.ucsd.edu. That's, uh, that's my best recommendation right now. Um, so I really wanna thank everyone that put together this webinar. Um, this was not originally on the, the, the schedule and it really came up as a need while we were doing this uh, webinar series. And so this a special thank you to everybody that really came together very quickly to, to put this content together and um, especially to our, our fund management team and our presenters, especially that, that jumped in at the last minute and uh, we, were, we were working really hard last week to get this together. So thank you so much, um, especially Simona and Tassine and uh, Richard and Elaine and Anna and Sandy. You guys were just all really, really helpful to make sure that this um, came together. And of course our central office um, support as well. So I hope you all found this um, helpful and useful and uh, we'll be posting everything just as soon as we can and have a great Monday.